welcome to today's episode where we will be talking to expert pet groomer Stuart Simons. He'll be discussing how you can help spruce up your pets and keep them looking and feeling really nice during the COVID-19 lockdown and beyond as we go into week six of the lockdown, don't our dogs need it with all their longer hair and maybe needing a bath, etc. So um, I'm going to just jump straight in and introduce you to Stuart. So hi, Stuart. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Kelly. Welcome. Hi. It's nice to see you. you. So just let um, me just sit back while I just do a little introduction. Um, so it might make you blush. So uh, Stuart is proud to have been at the forefront of the British grooming industry for many years, although he looks far too young, for many, many years, and has been has appeared on many TV shows, including Jonathan Ross, um, Channel 5 News, Lorraine, Alan Titchmarsh, um, this morning, lots of TV, um, and he's also judged and lectured at many grooming shows around the world and specialises in safety within creative grooming. So something I'm very passionate as well about safety. Um, he's highly qualified um, and is in fact only, one of only two groomers in Europe to hold uh, a qualification for creative grooming um, and the only European groomer to achieve have achieved master's marks in his qualification. So we're dealing, talking with someone who really knows his stuff. He's got two salons here in the UK and he's also a really, really lovely man. So I know you're going to love listening to what he's got to say. So thank you, Stuart, for joining us today um, and sharing all of your knowledge with us in such a short period of time. You're very welcome. I'm looking forward to it. How can I help? <laughs> well, you can help me with many things. So, I mean, we're in this lockdown. Yeah. Dogs might have been like due for a clip or groom before and then all of a sudden we go into this period of time when they can't come and see a groomer so is this the time that we as owners should be turning into our pets own personal hairdressers and getting clippers out and cutting no the simple answer is no the best okay. thing you can do is be really good owners and brush our dogs just make sure that their brush their, that their hair and their skin and coat is maintained and the best way to do that is to brush them Every day? Every day. If you want to, you can do it twice a day. Don't brush too hard. But you just need to make sure that all those snaggles and the little uh, the debris that they get from their daily walks is removed and that you can get a comb through their hair. That's, it literally is the most important thing. If you've got a shedding breed, just make sure that, that you're up to date with their undercoat removal, which is probably a once a week de-shed. But the most important message we need to get out there is that all the, all the dogs that are our pets are brushed regularly. Okay. So even though it's getting warm, we shouldn't like be feeling like, oh, I really need to help my dog to be more comfortable and get rid of that coat. We should just be brushing it. No, because a dog, absolutely, we should just be brushing it because for the time that this lockdown goes on for, um, it's not going to be forever. And as long as a dog's coat is maintained, like brushed, and, um, and that, that, that's a regular thing, then the dog can regulate its temperature. It understands what it's got. Mother Nature very rarely gets things wrong. So, you know, brush your dog, make sure there's no matting or anything that we've incurred, and that that coat can, can breathe and the skin can breathe, and then the dog will understand naturally that it can regulate its own temperature. Um, and what about those people who are not used to brushing their dog's coat every day? It's not a habit. What tips have you got that they could use to get into the habit of doing that every day? Well, dogs really rely on um, habit. They're, they, they're creatures of habit. They like to have things regularly done to them. So the more sort of, uh, the more into the schedule you can introduce the grooming, the better. So I'm always saying to people, you know, why not leave a brush next to the kettle? And then every time you boil the kettle, you can brush a leg. And then by the end of the day, I mean, everyone has four cups of tea a day. We're British, after all. Surely you'd have a fully groomed dog by the end of each day. Okay, okay. perfect. I mean, I'm not a tea drinker, but coffee. I'm, sure I'm, coffee. I'm the only person in the whole of the UK. No, no coffee either. Maybe by the tap where I have a glass of water. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So everyday brushing. Yes. By the, by the tap or the kettle, the brush by the tap or the kettle. What about bathing? Bathing, How absolutely. Yeah, you can bath your dogs if you need it. The thing is that the products that you can get nowadays on the market, the pet label product, you've got to make sure that it's a pet label product. It's not a human label because our pH is different. Why, why is that? Well, because of our pH is a different. And then so the, re the skin reactions, etc., can have it can have a different adverse effect on a dog 
than what it does to us. So even the baby shampoos aren't right for dogs. Always go for a pet okay. level product. Because so you do hear some people product. saying that I don't, I don't use a normal um, shampoo. I only use a gentle baby shampoo on my dog. So you're saying that's not. That's Bam. not the one. I'm saying that's not okay. Different okay. pH, completely different. Okay. Pet labelled. Always go with pet labelled and read the directions on the back because some pet labelled shampoos require dilution and it's really important that you follow the guides because um because as you know uh shampoo is a chemical and as as much as water is a chemical when you mix the two together that's how they work if you just smeared shampoo on a dry dog it would just be shampoo on a dry dog you wouldn't be cleaning it's the reaction from the shampoo and the water that creates the cleanliness that makes it. Did you, did you leave the shampoo on the dog's coat for a period of time and before you washing it off, or just no? Just... Whatever it says on the label, follow the label because some might want you to do that. It's really important that whatever shampoo you use, you read the label. And of course, we're talking, I guess, mainly about dogs, but what about cats? Should we be barking cats as well? Yeah, so we she's version with a longer coat. And... Yes, cats should be, should be getting a bath. Everyone thinks that cats clean themselves but actually what they really do is they just rub saliva all over themselves which is pretty gross so they do need a cat but cats generally don't like water it's really really important i think that you get advice from your professional cat groomer so okay. most people on the lockdown are you can email most professional groomers um or you can give them a call and they'll answer they're answering messages most pro groomers out there are giving advice over the phone or over email even in the lockdown so if you are worried about your cat um, I would definitely get advice from the groom before you did anything, apart from brushing. What about, what about um, so daily brushing your cat and bathing your cat out or your dog? Is there any bathing your, bath your dog? Yeah. I think before you bath your cat, I would definitely give your groom a call. Okay. It's only because they're just a bit more dangerous and they're more, much more tricky to handle. There's more things that can go wrong, really, in a bath with a cat. So I think that just to get a little bit of advice would be worth it, just so that you know exactly what you're dealing with. Okay. And if we go back to brushing, what kind of brushes would you suggest people use? Is the normal? So, so for a hair bearing dog, um, that's not. What's a hair bearing dog? A hair bearing dog is a dog that grows and grows and grows. So they've got hair like ours. You know how our hair grows and doesn't stop growing. That's a hair bearer. Um, a fur bearer grows to a predetermined length and then stops and then they shed, which is how they work. So basically, poodles, bichons, they're all hair bearers um, and fur bearers would be, I don't know, chow chows or German shepherds. Okay. okay. So with, with a chow chow, uh, sorry, with a hair bearing dog, you'd use a slicker brush and a comb. So you brush through and then you would check that you've got all the knots out with a comb. And with a fur bearing dog, you'd de-shed. So once a week, de-shedding can remove um, hair, re remove shedding by up to 30, limit shedding, I should say, by up to 90%. So it's really, really important that if you do that once a week, that regularity really helps with them to, again, regulate their temperature. So brushing and de-shedding are two different things. Yeah, well, yeah, they are. I mean, you still, you could still brush a fur bearer with a slicker brush because it's also going to remove undercoat, but you also need to de-shed. There's an awful lot of tools out there for lots of different uh, hair types. So what I would suggest everyone does is research, make sure they know what hair type they've got and find the best product for them. Furminator have actually got a product for most coats. So for, let's say, for a cockapoo, a cockapoo, I'd use a cock fiddle. anything that's hair bearing, I would probably use a slicker brush and a comb. Okay. And but then for something for like, for something like um, a long hair, like an Afghan hound or a Shih Tzu with a drop coat or um, those type of dogs, I would probably use a pin brush and a comb. I probably wouldn't use a slicker brush, it's going to break the coat. So you want something a bit more gentle, something that's going to go through and, make, and take care of oh. that lovely, beautiful flowy hair but that's still a hair okay. bearer. are you with me uh, yeah yeah and uh, i'm totally with you and going back to the the poodles and yeah. the, the coats just trying to keep it simple for people if they've got a dog at home that usually go, does go to the groomers every eight weeks for the grooming and it's now looking it's yeah. looking like a bird's nest the coat's looking out of control um you would suggest that what do people do to what, what should they do for their, those dogs what kind of 
tools should they use? So they really, the most important thing they have is a slicker brush and a comb because they're hairy yeah. and they're, and so they're, they've got a woolly kind of coat. So you need to get as much air into that hair as possible. Okay. So the more they brush, the better. They're the hardest so, to maintain. So they get, you get air into the hair? Air into the hair. You basically, the, the way to check it is once you've brushed, you take a comb, just a regular comb, and put it through the coat. And if it stops, then you go back to the slicker brush and brush again. Okay. You can use, there's and, like sprays out in the market that you can spray on, like a conditioning spray. Spray on, brush through, and it's going to help get rid of any of those snags. There's quite a few of those on the market that are excellent. And it's always best if you've got a, a cockapoo or a cavapoo, anything hairy, is that just give it a little spritz before you brush it anyway because that will stop breakages of the hair. So what about um, people at home with a dog or a cat and maybe their dog or cat doesn't like being brushed? Have you got any top tips for people how to calm their dogs down? I'm assuming we shouldn't be raising our voices and shouting at our pets if they're not behaving in a way we want them to. What advice would you give to people? Loads. Of, for me, it's all about positive reinforcement and making sure that you're calm in stressful situations. Dogs really pick up on our energies. It's like lots of people would say, for some reason, my dog goes for other dogs while it's on the lead, but when it's not on the lead, it doesn't. And that's, I think, mostly because if another dog comes along, there's something in us that goes, oh, there's another dog coming along. And then that energy transfers down the lead and they know. Because they know us in a different way. They, they, our language is different with owners and dogs. So if a dog's nervous, positive reinforcement, making sure that everything's okay and that you're completely outwardly calm. If you're worried about brushing your dog and you're thinking, oh no, it doesn't like me doing this bit, then the dog's gonna get worse and worse and it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, it just happens. So you yeah. have to really make sure that you maintain an equal level of calmness. Okay, and would you suggest keeping the dog on the ground? As I know in, in your salon, you would put the dog on a table to breathe? Yeah, so for me, Dogs that don't like being brushed generally react differently if you're, they're put in a, in, a, uh, in a situation that they're not used to being in. So if your dog's small enough and you've got a, a table, take the dog off the floor and onto the table for, uh, for the grooming time. They really like a certain amount of regularity. They, they're, they're creatures of habit. They love things to be like a, a, in rotation. I can't think of the right word for it. <laughs> But they like, um, what's the they word? Like routine. Routine, like routine, that's the word. They like routine. So if we can create a grooming schedule, a routine, then it gets easier and easier every time. So if you take the dog off the floor, as long as it's safe to do so. So if you've got someone to help you, you can put a towel on the table so the dog doesn't slip. And what you'll find will happen, well, it happens quite a lot. Obviously not all dogs are like it, but what you'll find is the dog will stand still because they'll go, oh, what am I doing up here? Why on earth has my mum or dad put me on this table? And then they'll stand still for them because they're out of their comfort zone. It's not normal. And like I say, as long as it's safe and you can get the job done, then it, it works 90% of the time. Yeah, so as long as they're safe and happy, I guess. And while they're on that table and you're brushing and you bath them, um, and maybe you've dried them off as well. Yeah, you must make sure you use a hairdryer because um once they're wet and if you just leave if you towel dry them then just leave them then that's going to create matting so it's going to be even worse in the future okay. but best to use a hairdryer and also it gets the dog used to the listening to the hairdryer for the for ready when for when they go back to the groomers and what about nails well nails is a funny one because i mean you can buy nail clippers in most shops everywhere sells them but actually it's it's the one thing that groomers kind of hate other people doing simply because it's so easy especially with a black nail to cut the quick so the quick is the nerve that runs into the nail and if you look at the side of the nail even black ones you can see where the nerve starts and finishes and a lot of groomers even and a lot of people will cut into that nerve by accident and it creates pain straight away but it's very instant and lots of blood that's what will happen um, and then that, what happens then is the dog suddenly has fear of having their nails done. And so it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, and that goes on for the rest of their life. They've got memories like elephants. They know yeah. that that's going to happen. So what we want to try and do is steer away from the whole, any kind of pain. We don't run torture chambers. We want the dog to have a nice time or we want to maintain their, their well, well-being. So what I would suggest is either a grinder, something that you can 
by the safe and you can just write it's like um it's like a, an electric emery board if you like <laughs> you, turn, yeah. you know um like you know the sanders they're like a mini one of those <laughs> and you just put it on the end of the nail and it just files it down for you or failing that if you haven't got one of those and there's not one available on online then you can just use an emery board it works exactly the same good idea good idea and how do people know if their dog's um, nails are too long well if you can hear them on the floor they're usually too long because dogs should walk on their pads and not on their nails so if you hear tick, 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 then generally they probably need a trip Okay, so that's when you get your grind or your emery board out. Exactly. The thing is with the nails is that even once they're cut, some dogs will still go tick, 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 because what happens is every time you cut the nail, the nerve recedes. So it should be done really, really regularly to encourage that nerve to go back every time it's clipped. So okay. once they're on a regular schedule, eventually you'll, they'll have very short nails that don't touch the floor, but it'll, it'll take a little while. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So you're literally training the nail bed. Exactly. It's interesting, right? I think it's it really is. interesting. Maybe. It is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, like, if someone is grooming, you're saying no clippers, no scissors, because that's dangerous. That's the clear message. Well, I just think that as long as they're brushed, we're not going to be in this situation for years. Um, touch wood. And uh, as long as they're brushed, we've done, as, as, dog, as pet owners, we've done our job. We've done the best that we can do. And then once we're open again, the group, professional groomers will uh, safely be able to assess the risk, assess the coat, and be able to, to do what's needed to make sure that they're healthy, healthy and happy. Um, if we try and do it ourselves from home, then we're looking at a high risk. So a groomer is always looking at sort of the amount of risk that's going to be involved in anything. So if it's really matted, we don't want to brush it out because it's going to really hurt that dog. So we shave it off. And that's general good practice. Right. We ask an owner to do that. We're asking for injury because they don't know where the dangerous bits are. And clippers, there's little, um, for all the blades that you get on the clippers, there's little gaps and bits of skin can go into those gaps and you can end up injuring your dog. And also I've seen people pull hair that's matted away from the dog and then snip but they don't know where the, the hair finishes and the skin starts. So I've had lots of dogs come into my salon with triangles where the scissors have just gone into their skin, which is just awful. No oh, wow. So vets are saying they're seeing a rise in patients coming in with home grooming injuries and hospitals are seeing a rise. At the moment during the lockdown. Yeah. And so also we're going to be seeing a rise in hospitals saying that uh, owners have had injuries from where the dog's bitten and where they've been hurt. So it's just better all around if everyone just brushes their dog. And if the hair's going in their eyes, put the hair up. With a little, a little, a little bow. ponytail. Yeah, you can buy them online. And it's much, you know, a, a, a band isn't going to gouge a dog's eye out, whereas a pair of scissors very, you know, possibly could. Okay. And if talking about like clipping dogs accidentally, are there any particular areas in the body um, when you're grooming with, with a, with a, with a, a good brush, a good any tool that could be a bit more sensitive that maybe like under the axilla or the armpits, you know, there's a bit of very delicate skin there. Are there any areas that you're more cautious about when you're grooming? Absolutely. So definitely under there, 100 percent Anything in their sanitary area, I would probably steer clear of that area if it's really knotty and matted. I, I you know that can wait, I think. And uh, the back of their legs at the bottom, where just before the hop, there's like a little bone or it's cartilage, I think. And you'll be able to feel it because you can actually stick your finger through where the yeah, bone I know is and the cartilage is. Yeah. Um, you just have to be very, very careful there because it's very delicate. So just take your time. Maybe you, would you recommend people just leave those areas alone? or just You can very... brush them because it's not going to hurt you brushing them. Just don't try and scissor or clipper them. It's just not worth it. There's also then, a skin that goes between, like, um, where the body is and the thigh is underneath. So near the sanitary area, it's quite a taut bit of skin. You have to be very careful there, too. And what about, just finally, um, any questions? Like if people have a puppy and they, they've got this puppy and they didn't know lockdown was about to happen, we, couldn't, we didn't have a crystal ball, we didn't know what was going to happen... They've got the puppy at home and they would ordinarily have brought the puppy to you 
to get used to the grooming process, but they can't now. What would you suggest they do again? Is it just grooming, just, just brushing on a daily basis? Well, it's really important that they uh, get used to the sights and the sounds and the smells of the world. And that includes grooming, but you can do everything that we would do in a salon at home for a puppy, because for a puppy, I like to make them what I call bomb proof by the time they're six months old. And that, so that generally means they have a monthly visit to me or a professional groomer for what I call a feet, face and bum trim. So <coughs> get rid of the trimming. You'll put them in the bath, give them a good wash, give them a good dry with a blow dryer so that they're used to the noise of the blow dryer. Um, give them uh, a good brush through again. And if they've got any hair that's in their eyes, just put it up. Just basically okay. what you do is trying to expose them to everything that they're going to be exposed to during their life so that when they do eventually come to the grooming salon, it's not a torture chamber. It's a nice place to go to. Yeah. Positivity. Absolutely. hundred percent. It's all about yeah, calmness. Positive. Yes. Okay. So people would be just to recap, brushing every day, keeping their brush by the kettle or the tap. Yeah. Bathing carefully. How often? Once a month, would you say? Or how? Again, with the products that are around these days, you can, they're, they're, they're much higher quality than they used to be. You can pretty much do it as, as often as you want to. I think once a week. I, I wash mine once a week with a really good quality shampoo. There's nothing wrong with that. So, okay. yeah. And I would say as well that when you're washing a dog, you should probably think about how you wash. So, what I do, sorry about my dog in the background, he's, he's, he's agreeing with us. Okay, it's a virtual chat, it's fine. Exactly. So I wet the body and then wet the head. And then I'll shampoo the body and then I'll shampoo the head. And then I'll okay. rinse the head first and then I'll rinse the body. And the reason so I why do, do you flip that at the end? Because I don't want the shampoo anywhere near the eyes and those, those sensitive areas for longer than it needs to be. So I lather it up, put it on, and it just, you know, that you do it in that order so that it keeps the dog as comfortable as possible in the bar. Okay. Okay. It's important that you look, these little things, they're, you don't think that they're common sense, but they are common sense. A dog can't tell you if it's uncomfortable. I like to opt for natural shampoos and conditioners um, because I think that, you know, anything that smells too much can be quite strong for a dog. And I mean, they've got much more olfactory glands than we have so any smells are really really strong to us are crazy to dogs so i try yeah. to go for something that's more a little bit more natural what i would like to do just to finish with um before we say goodbye to you is just do what we call our quick five five round and i'm going to ask you five quick questions um and you the goal is to i um, give me one or two words in your answers you can't talk for too long so i know this is going to be an ask for you stuart okay. <laughs> but let's let's see what we can do so my first question is which grooming tool would you not be without a slicker brush and a de-shedder and a comb <laughs> Um, what would you suggest people uh, um, invest in? What do, what grooming tools would you suggest a home groomer should? Depending, I'm allowed to say, depending on the hair type, a slicker brush, a deep shedder, and a comb. So a brush, for... a brush, a deep shedder, and a comb. Okay. Um, and what's one thing that an owner can do to help their pet to enjoy grooming? I think we know the answer already. So positive reinforcement, being very calm, and. Um, Consistency, regularity. Okay. What's your favourite breed? Poodle. <laughs> and um, what one quality do you need to help you groom a difficult pet? So if someone's at home, what quality do they need? What's that one thing they need to have a... Absolutely, a without any shadow of a doubt, patience. You must be full of patience. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Stuart. Uh, <laughs> the time and your patience it's been lovely to chat to you you're very welcome my love the rest of your day and thank you for sharing all your expertise in such a short period of time you're very welcome my darling Mwah. bye 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 if you have a pet that sheds then you have shedlings here's how to defeat them verminator presents how to defeat shedlings Follow our simple grooming tips to get rid of them. Groom daily to detangle and remove loose hair.
The Ferminator Dual Grooming Brush is a two-in-one brush with hard and soft bristles to remove tangles and loose hair while keeping the coat smooth and shiny. For pets with thick fur, use the grooming rake to remove tangles, loose hair and prevent matted hair. If hair is already matted, use the adjustable dematter tool to safely and easily remove matted hair. The curry comb massages pet skin to help distribute natural oils that promote coat health and shine. To remove loose hair from shedding up to 99%, use 10 to 20 minutes per week. The new stainless steel curved edge follows your pet's natural shape. With skin guard feature, the tool gently glides over your pet's skin without digging in at the edges. To de-shed your pet, choose the right de-shedding tool to match your dog's body size and hair length. With short, gentle strokes, use the tool to reach deep under the pet's top coat to remove the loose undercoat. This is where all the stubborn shedding comes from. The Ferminator de-shedding tool works on cats as well. Bathe monthly with Ferminator shampoo and conditioner using the bathing brush. De-shedding starts with a good bath. Our shampoo helps loosen the undercoat where the bulk of shedding comes from. Follow up with our gentle conditioner